Welcome back! My name is Blake and in this video I'm going to show you how I created these faux birch trees. I'm using these birch trees for a window display at a local boutique called Goose Feathers. I'll talk a little bit more about the boutique at the end of the video. I will give you a little bit of a warning. Well, I don't know a warning. It's not really a disclaimer. I don't know what to call it. I will give you a little heads up. This project can be very time consuming. So I highly recommend getting a friend to help you because four hands will definitely be better than two. Luckily, my friend Rachel came to my rescue and she helped me throughout the process of making these and then she also helped me with hanging these up. Let's all say hello to Rachel. This project has been a long time coming for me. I got my shipping tubes around Christmas last year and then I finally started the project around spring. And then it was end times. So this project kind of got pushed off until um, the end of the summer. Oh. This project is actually pretty straightforward. All you really need is whatever base you're going to use. For our bases, we used shipping tubes, pipe insulation, which basically looks like a pool noodle with a slit down the middle and you use it to wrap around pipes to insulate them, hence the name. You could also use pool noodles, however, when I was starting this project, I couldn't find any. And then finally, we use some actual branches. There isn't much prep involved with this. Like I mentioned, half of my trees were made out of these shipping tubes. Not this one specifically. I don't know what this one was from. This one was just from a package that I had, but I'm going to use it as an example. The tubes that I got for this project are telescopic. Telescopic? Telescopic. That sounds better. Mine ended up extending out to be a little over eight feet, which was perfect because the windows that we're using these in was right at eight feet. So I had to start off with extending my tubes out as far as they could possibly go and putting hot glue around the edges so that way when I fit them together, they'll stay there. I used a lot of hot glue throughout this project. I suggest being a little more careful um, than what I was. I use hot glue nearly every day, so I've gotten used to knowing about when I can touch it because uh, there is this kind of like sweet spot where it's still warm enough to be soft and gooey but not so hot that it burns you. So throughout this entire process, if you're not familiar with hot glue, then wear something on your hands or just don't worry about squishing the hot glue down. It's not that big a deal. It's definitely not worth getting burnt over. Try and get comfortable with the glue, but at the same time, don't burn yourself. Some people's hands are not as calloused as mine, so be careful. But with that being said, I glued the pieces of my tubes together and smoothed them out. Then it became time to wrap the tubes, or whatever your base is, in paper. I ended up cutting tissue paper into anywhere from three to four to sometimes six to eight inch wide strips. And what I do is crease them a long way, like this. And this just makes it to where it's a little bit easier to work with. Don't think about it too much, because it's not that big a deal. But to start off, all you do is put down a little bit of glue, Put down the end and I actually if you can see here I actually like to kind of squish it in more narrow than what it needs to be and then you just keep wrapping your paper around whatever your base is just like this while you're going you do want to kind of keep it kind of keep it flat like this that way you're covering more area and naturally it's going to wrinkle so it's going to create these sort of horizontal wrinkles all on its own. I do also recommend gluing as you go along, maybe every couple of inches. With bigger pieces like this, it doesn't matter so much, but we did end up covering some branches. There were some instances where I glued down the beginning, wrapped around the whole thing, and then glued down the end, 
And with our branches, once we got them up, we realized there were a few branches that we wanted to cut back. So if we were to try and cut the branch halfway through where the paper was, we had to re-glue that paper down, which isn't a big deal. But if it's something that's already hanging and you don't want to be hot gluing something that's like dangling in the air, it's just a good little thing to do in advance. You got it? Another step we took to add in a little bit of randomness to make it look a little bit more natural was in about half of our trees we went through and added in a little branch just every so often. These were kind of decorative sticks that we had. We've had them for a few years and they just always end up getting in the way so I broke them apart and used them on our birch trees. Once they were glued on I did go back in and wrap them with more paper. Another thing that I did but didn't actually capture was on the other half of the trees that we didn't do branches on we bought up some paper like this and then we taped them down and once you wrap your tissue paper around the whole thing in the end it ends up looking like these little notches on the tree. Once our trees were completely wrapped, I decided to go over with a, not really a dry brush, but a very quick coat of paint just to capture the kind of highlights and to add a little bit more of a barky kind of texture on top of the paper. And depending on what your purpose for this project is, you can stop there. This is something that you can use in a lot of different ways. We're using it in the windows of a local boutique. However, you can use them as like a sort of art installation for a party or an event. You can use them as, again, an art installation or some kind of a backdrop for a retail space, a backdrop for a photo shoot. And you can also change up how you do it too. They don't have to be white. They don't have to be birch trees. You can turn them into whatever kind of tree you want. Along the lines of having them for like a, a photo backdrop, I think it would be really cool to have them hanging up in a photo booth and kind of have them hanging almost in a circle, like a little opening among the trees and you're photographing the person in the middle. That way you do have some that are in the foreground because I think that's something that makes it look a little bit more realistic or rather, I guess you could say dynamic. After I added the white paint, I did go through and randomly add in the little black lines throughout the trees. Sometimes I did little lines just randomly here. Sometimes I did a whole stripe around the whole thing because it doesn't really matter because you're never going to see all sides at once. This was when they really started looking like birch trees to me. We did take the extra step of covering actual tree branches to hang among our tree trunks. When you're covering smaller things in this way, you definitely want to use a more narrow strip of paper. But other than that, it's the same process. If you do end up using something that's already natural like trees or 
actual branches. There are ways to paint them and make them look more like birch. However, I didn't specifically want them to look 100% like realistic birch trees in this situation. I wanted the whole window display to feel very of like one material. So I wanted everything to look like it was made from paper because later I do end up adding paper leaves. I wanted it to all look like it went together. The leaves were pretty straightforward and there's again a million ways you can do this. Each leaf is a full sheet of construction paper. We chose very fall colors obviously. The leaves for this project ended up changing over time because we kept learning what we actually had to do in order to make them look effective in the window. It turned out with these, you don't have to go crazy with detail because there is going to be a lot of them. They're going to be clustered since they're going to be on branches and among tree trunks. It's going to have the illusion of being leaves, even if they were just crumpled up sheets of just full pieces of paper. There were some leaves where we took the construction paper, folded it in half, cut out half the leaf, that way when you fold it open it's symmetrical. Then we took hot glue and we put a little bead of glue all the way down the middle and closed it back up and then when you open it there's that kind of vein that's created and you can see that in some of these clips here. Once the vein was created then we crumpled them all and then we unfolded them. Sometimes there were little rips in the leaves and this is where we took the opportunity to kind of pucker and cut the leaves even more to make them look like they were dried curled up leaves. So for example if the leaf was ripped here then we would put a little dot of glue and then glue it on itself that way it kind of did create this like cup effect as we went on we realized that for one you can't really see the veins from a distance or really realize that they're there when you're up close so some of the leaves i didn't even put that i just put a dot of glue kind of at the base and not along the entire middle but like I said, if you decide to do this, there's a million different ways you can do the leaves. I know that they even sell fake leaves in small bags at some of the dollar stores and craft stores. So if you wanted to, you could actually just glue on leaves. I mean, you could also just glue on real leaves. Or if you don't even want to worry about wrapping all of your branches in paper, you can just start off with using branches that already have leaves on them. This is just, again, a way for us to make it make the entire window display look like it's one project, one sort of aesthetic. I don't remember how many packs of construction paper I bought, but I do know that once the leaves were made, we filled up three entire plastic tub bin things, totes. You know what I'm talking about. Finally, it's time to hang your trees. We were lucky enough to be hanging these in a window that had two metal rods fixed to the ceiling along the entire window. So we were able to hang our trees in two different rows, which I think gave it a more dynamic effect to make it look like there was a sort of foreground and background. This also allowed us to do the same thing with the branches because in some situations, for example, if this is your branch, we kind of wanted them to be angled forward. That way we could have more of the window sort of real estate taken up instead of just being at sort of that profile view. So we were able to hang one side up a little higher with the fishing line and then let the front be a little bit lower. That way you see more from the top of the trees. Branches. You know what I mean. We did hang all of these with fishing line. I put a hole in each side of the end and then just fed the fishing line through. So if we wanted to make this a little bit more modular where we could change it over time, I probably would go in and do some sort of a, like a coat hanger hook or something so that way you can hang it up more easily and then also move them more easily. If we did want to move any of these, we're going to have to climb back up the ladder, kind of fiddle with the fishing line, then have to retie it wherever we want to move it. The final step for these were to add the leaves. Once the leaves were done, we did end up adding a sort of paper loop on them. So this is a giant version, just to show you an example, but we just looped a piece of paper. We glued it to the bottom of the leaf, and then we were able to either just hook the leaves onto the branches or 
we glued one side and then kind of wrapped it around the branch and glued it on the other side. This will make it to where it's easy for us to go through and clip down all of the leaves when it's time to do our Christmas display. I think everything came together so well. I honestly, throughout the process, I was a little bit uh, nervous because this is a big project. I, I think I kind of agreed to something and committed to it before realizing the full scope, but I don't regret a single bit. I need to do more bigger projects like this, but luckily we will be changing this throughout the seasons. I know we're gonna do specifically a Christmas display, we're gonna do a winter display, and then we haven't really thought too much past that. Speaking of the boutique, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Goose Feathers because this is a place that really means a lot to me. As some of you might know, part of my business is creating these handmade felt flowers. And for the longest time, I just did small events, craft shows, things like that. This was my first official retailer. The owner, Carrie, and Goose Feathers has always been a huge support for me and my work. If it wasn't for her sitting down with me, um, and asking what I needed in order to make it sustainable for me to put my work in her store, I don't think I would be where I am today as far as setting up the sort of behind the scenes systems of having that wholesale part of my business. I do have some more projects that I've already done for Goose Feathers that are coming up soon. And I'm also working on some more autumn projects because I just didn't get my feel for Halloween this year. If you want to see more from me, then do all the internet things. Subscribe, like, comment, or follow me on my social media. All the links will be in the description below. And if you want to go a step further and support me in a different way, I'll also have my Patreon link below. It'll include the different tier options that I have, which include a monthly subscription box for my felt flowers. Thank you so much for joining me for this project. And let me know if y'all make this project. You can tag me with the hashtag MakeWithBlake. And action. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> this shirt's very blousy. I like it. This is gonna be so hard to edit. Got my Harry Potter glasses on today. Drinking my juice. I know these are awful for you, but I need life. Oh, there's something in it. A surprise! <laughs>